Welcome to a special edition of the Commissioner's Corner. This week, as we continue to dive into National Girls and Women's in Sports Day and our special take on that, the WCHA National Girls and Women's in Sports Week, I'm so excited to be joined by a couple of young women who are blazing their own path in the sports industry and in uh, their own potential professional careers. Uh, both of them providing their services to the WCHA. Please let me introduce you to Rachel Herzog. Rachel is a St. Cloud State alum, play, former player in the WCHA, who for the last two seasons has hosted Inside the WCHA for us, a weekly highlight show. Uh, additionally, she is the in-studio host for Husky, Husky Productions and majoring in sports broadcasting about to... Uh, enter into the workforce here when she graduates in May. Maybe we'll talk about that. Maybe if that's the plan moving forward. And Jane Horvat. Jane is our communications intern for the WCHA. She's in her second season with us. Uh, the brains behind a lot of the incredible social media content that we continue to churn out. And uh, certainly uh, a young woman whose communications desires and background have helped us tremendously. Ladies, Thanks for joining me. I have so many questions for you. So um, if you're good, we're just going to get right into it. <laughs> let's do it. All right, Rachel, let's start with you. So uh, walk everybody maybe through sort of your path in college. And then what made you decide that working in sports was something that you wanted to do? Well, coming in as a freshman, I in high school really liked science and math. So I came in kind of thinking I was going to stick with that route. My older sister also was in that path. She's in medical school now. So she stuck with that a little bit more than I did. Um, but by the end of my sophomore year, I decided that that wasn't for me. I'm way too social of a person. I like to be around people a lot more than what I was maybe getting in that major. And at that point, when I knew I wanted to switch, I didn't know what I wanted to get into. And there was the in-studio host for Husky Productions at the time, Katie Emmer, who kind of pushed me into the TV realm. And I kind of went into it full, full force and kind of just ended up in it. And I'm very thankful that she did that for me because it's ended up being something that's been really great for me. Obviously, being a former player, it kind of continues me in the sports realm. And even though I'm not playing, I still get to talk about hockey a lot, which is why I'm enjoying it so much now. I get that. A lot of people say, you know, the hardest thing for all of us as former athletes is kind of how to let it go in a sense, yeah. right? It's so much of what yeah. you do for so long. So having the opportunity to stay in it in such a different capacity, it obviously is something that I'm sure drew you to it. How about for you, Jane, maybe a little bit similar path in terms of being a former, former athlete, a different path, getting into communications and, and maybe how you got to the WCHA. Why, why sports for you? So I grew up in sports my whole life. My dad was a D1 soccer coach. My mom was a high school volleyball coach, coaching at high school. And I've just been surrounded by it my whole life. So when I was playing throughout high school, I was really into it, but I knew that where I wanted to, to go to not be able to play on their teams. Um, I had fun, was not quite skilled enough to make the Notre Dame women's basketball team. So I tabled that dream. And um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to do, I was like, plenty of reasons, but um, also because I just thought that that would be a good way to stay in sports while not getting to, you know, be on the court again. So joined the athletic communications department in the athletic department at Notre Dame and was arriving on campus like I had my interview for the athletic department the day I got there um so it was part of my entire collegiate experience and I didn't really think I wanted to go into sports when I started but I enjoyed that job so much that I was like a long time so thank you to Notre Dame athletic department <laughs> <laughs> everybody has to get their start somewhere I think I mean I would be the first to tell you that I, I maybe thought I would be in sports in some capacity and but if you had told me 20 years ago, I'd be, you know, the commissioner of a women's hockey league, there's not a chance I would have believed that because, you know, you just take the opportunities as they come in your, along the path. That's my advice to all of you. Write that one down. Take your opportunities <laughs> and just make the most of them because you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Let's talk about maybe, I think one of the important themes of this week as I've talked to other women and as we continue to talk about women in sports is this idea of 
lifting others, right? That we as women in particular really have to support, lift, push, encourage. Katie said, Rachel, come do this. Someone I'm sure at Notre Dame said to Jane, like, hey, you should stick in this. This is good. This is what we're doing. You know, you find those people along the way who, you know, you look up to who've kept you in it. So I'm curious, and Rachel, we'll start with you in your field, and maybe it's Katie and you can go deeper, but who do you look up to in your field and, and why? It definitely is Katie. She was kind of the first mentor that I had going into the major. She was a senior when I started. Um, thinking about TV and she stuck with me when I first started my junior year. So she kind of gave me pointers and she would look over some of my stuff that I would send her and she'd give me tips and things that I'm doing well, things I wasn't. And she's just overall ever since then been a really big supporter of me and she's doing really great things now. She just left her job. Actually, she was the in-studio host for the Philadelphia Flyers, which was a huge opportunity for her out, out of college. She worked for the Minnesota Gophers at Fox Sports North initially and then got a job out in Philadelphia but she's been doing really great things and definitely a personality that I connect to as well we're very similar in personality so I look to her and what she's been doing to kind of mimic that or to help me grow and to be into my own self so as much as I'd like to talk to her more she's a very very busy girl um, she's definitely been a big big influence for me and I appreciate her a lot. And I'm sure when she gets a chance to listen to this, she'll, she'll say likewise, because I think that's one thing we have to remember is that even if she's pushing you and learning from, or if she's pushing you and you're learning from her, no doubt she was learning a little bit from you along the way. How about for you, Jane? Is there a woman, you know, in your field or even in just in sports in general, who's, you know, challenged you, pushed you to, to stay in it? Yeah. So I don't know, for me, it's a little different. There actually weren't that many women that I saw doing the job that I'm doing when I was growing up, I didn't really even know this was a job growing up. So there's that. But I mean, when I got started at Notre Dame, the head of the athletic communications department was a woman. Um, so I worked with her a little bit, but honestly, it's been more of like meeting other women along the way who are peers, but who have been in the business longer than me that I've learned from and watching them, you know, figure out how to still have a life outside of their job. Things like that um, have been really inspiring to me. And like, working under other women that's been huge so like shout out to Jen I love working under Jen um and like my first job there were other women but like the head of the department was a man which great guy just like there's something different about working directly under women in my opinion so I think what's uh interesting to to discuss and you know I've been fortunate to be in this business in some capacity for a long time. Um, maybe I won't say the number of years just to hold that. <laughs> anyway, for a long time. So to have the perspective of, of you two who are, you know, fresh, right? Like you, you're smart enough to know that there's challenges that are going to come your way and probably already have. Uh, and some of those challenges are different and more unique to us as women than they are for our male, male counterparts. And that's just, you know, part of the reality that we live with. But there's also some really unique opportunities as women that I would imagine you're looking towards and hoping that maybe these are things that could come along the way. So it's really sort of a two-part question and I'll, and maybe we'll do it in both parts, but what are you most worried about? What are you most, you know, fearful of in terms of challenges that might come down your path as you enter into this business we call sports? I'm going to flip the order. Jane, let's start with you. What about, what do you think you're most worried about? Well, I think one of the big things that I worry about a lot is other people's impressions of what I do and like me being in that space and how other people observe me, which is honestly more of a thing that like needs to be addressed in my own mind rather than like something that I deal with on the day to day basis. But there's just a lot of preconceptions about why a woman wants to be in sports. And that is like a very tough thing in my own mind. And like just talking to people who they're like, what do you do? I say I work in sports and they're like oh are you looking to meet a man like Ooh, <laughs> that was certainly not why I chose the career that I chose but thank you for that um and just like that those like occasional questions definitely have been in the back of my mind at times before of like do people think that I'm only here to meet a romantic partner like do people think that I'm only here to like for the experience rather than for the love of sports and for the things that like make this job very valuable to me. Um, so things like that. And also like showing up like 
I worry way too much about what I look like because do I look professional or do I just look like, I don't know. I think it's one of those things where sometimes I am so focused on how other people need to be perceiving me in order to take me seriously that I get so in my own head about it, even when it's maybe not as much of an issue as I think. And that is a struggle constantly. That's some real vulnerability that you just shared and you're not alone. I think, um, <laughs> I've, I've said this oftentimes and I feel like I'm dating myself again, but you know, there's this, we, we used to talk often about, uh, when I was young in this business about when you had an opportunity to get to the table that you had to be ready when, once you got there, you couldn't get to the table and, and not, not speak, not have a, not, not be ready, not have an answer, not have an opinion, not have you know, something to provide and something to give, because if you get there once and you've got nothing, you might not get back. And that is, <laughs> it's crazy to say that given how far we've come in this business, but it's very real. And there is always, I think, especially as women, always this innate, am I good enough? Am I doing enough? Am I proving myself in this business that's predominantly male? Yeah. I had a call this morning I have a call every other week with a screen full of men, amazing, wonderful men who do so much good work for our sport. And I appreciate them to no end. They're still all men. So there's a, there is always a, a place where I look and feel different in those moments. And, uh, you know, a year and a half in ish to this, to this job, I feel differently than I felt a year and a half ago, but it's a hundred percent real to feel unsure for no reason. And I think, you know, once someone, once you find the right person to validate, you validate your work, you're good, but um, it's just not that simple. And it, unfortunately, Jane, I want to tell you, it goes away and gets better. It might not, it, you'll learn different ways to, to know that you are enough. And certainly um, I hope that you already know that Rachel, how about for you? What, you know, you're getting into a pretty fickle business. If you ask me a lot of, yeah. um, you know, a lot of room for people to make comments and have opinions because, because you're visual, right? People will yep. hopefully see you and hear you. So I'm sure this isn't the first time you've thought about this or the first time folks have asked you, what, what are you worried about? What makes you the most anxious about getting into this business? Well, I'm kind of going to snowball off of you guys. Cause I agree with everything that you guys just said, but I think the biggest thing for me is people not thinking that I know the sport well enough because I'm a girl, mm -hmm. even though I've played it my whole life, I played at the collegiate level. I still struggle with people thinking that I don't know what I'm talking about. And that's been the hardest thing for me in the in-studio host position. I'm the analyst there. So I'm the one that's supposed to be breaking down plays and kind of analyzing things deeper because I've had that experience before that maybe not a lot of people in the, in the industry have had, but I still struggle in my head thinking that I don't know enough or I'm not saying things the right way or people aren't going to believe what I'm saying. And so that's a big thing for me too. But another thing that uh, Jane, you kind of touched on was how you look or how you're supposed to dress or this or that. I know I look at a lot of the other females that are in front of the camera in the industry and they're all really small and dainty and they have perfect hair. And I am not, I don't look like this all the time. Like this <laughs> is a new thing for me. Like having to get up and do your hair and your makeup and having outfits. Like I have like four nice pieces of clothing in my closet. Like trying to go out and go shopping and look nice on camera is something that's also very uncomfortable for me because I've always been relatively a tomboy my whole life. So that's a big struggle that I have too is do I look presentable on camera and all of these girls that I look up to or I see on social media and stuff in the industry they're all really tiny. Well I have an athlete's body <laughs> so it's a lot different trying to compare yourself to the people that you want to look up to and want to mimic in that realm and then reflecting back on yourself and thinking, do I need to be doing something different to kind of be at their level? So I think that's a big mental thing. I know Jane, you talked about that kind of like being in your own head rather than maybe what other people are thinking, but just kind of having the internal confidence to know that you know what you're talking about, you look good and you have all the experience you need to do well. I, I just, I appreciate the vulnerability that both of you are showing because 
you know, it's sort of the old like saying about social media. Most people see on social media, all, all the good, which is so not real. I'm a mom of two kids. I put out the good stuff. I don't put out the stuff that happens the other 95% of the time. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope, I guess I want to verbally say to both of you that I, I want you to have that internal confidence because I've seen you both do what you do so incredibly well and no one deserves to have ever get into your heads in that space. It's so much easier said than done. And I get that, but you both have every reason to be confident. So I hope that you, the more that you talk about it, I think in my opinion, the more you talk about things, the, the more they work themselves out. And, you know, like, like I mentioned to Jane, I don't think it's going to go away, Rachel. I think you're always going to look to see what everybody else is doing and how they look. And, and it, that will be, again, I think that's a very female thing and, and maybe not only females, I shouldn't say that, but it is a female thing to do to compare. And so my, my hope for both of you is that you hear often enough from those of us who get to see it that you're doing phenomenal work because if you weren't you wouldn't have the opportunities that you're you know that you have and to continue to push through that but also continue to be real about it because there is someone else that's going to hear this that that's going to resonate with and they're going to know like hey it, maybe it is more normal to have some doubts occasionally and um, we all have them there's no doubt about that let's flip the page to opportunities what do like you know as you think about really getting into this professionally and, and maybe doing it, you know, in, in more of a full-time type role, what do you most look forward to in terms of getting those opportunities? Jane, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, there's so many different things that like each aspect of working in sports can offer, but like, I know personally, I spend so much time, you know, behind a computer screen and like now, especially in a pandemic, working from home, not really getting to interact with colleagues, but like some of the best experiences that I've had since graduating. And even while I was in undergrad, like the people that I've met and like the opportunities that I've been able to experience, whether it's getting to work at professional arenas and travel. I've traveled to some really cool places, worked the Citrus Bowl my senior year. Like that was a really incredible opportunity that I got to do. Um, tournaments are always incredible, getting to see how people interact with fans and the communities. The interaction with communities has always been the thing that I've really wanted to do in sports. I always wanted to get to know like why athletes love their franchise, their team, like what the interactions with institutions and organizations are really like within the city because I mean growing up sports was just such a part of like the city's correspondence with each other like we talked about high school basketball and we talked about like you know the athlete from the high school down the street who's now on the NBA and how he's talking about um, our hometown thank you Fred Van Fleet like <laughs> those things are so important like that sense of community pervades throughout my entire hometown because this one athlete is successful and bringing attention to it. And I've always wanted to have that experience, whether it's, you know, getting to talk with athletes on the side about why they're so passionate about what they do or getting to talk to other people in the business about like what really incredible experiences have you learned? I've men and women, there's been so many people who have spoken to me and that I've learned from that I'm just like, you have done really, really incredible things. And if I get to do half of those things, then every time that I worried about, is this an appropriate skirt to wear to this interview? Or like, <laughs> is this tweet going to make people think that I'm dumb? Every single time that I've worried about those things is going to be worth it if I get to you know do half of the things that other people have experienced. And despite the pandemic, like those experiences aren't going to stop, especially in the next two to three years, so. No doubt, no doubt, stay in it because they're, they'll, they'll be there. How about for you, Rachel? What are you maybe most looking forward to as you get into the broad, your broadcasting career? I'm just really excited to meet more people. I know, Jane, you said that as well, but I just love making new connections with other people. I think joining this major has been the best decision I've ever made because it's, here at St. Cloud State, it's a really good program to be in sports broadcasting. So everybody that's involved in it is basically like a really big family because everything is put out there together. So everybody's kind of tag teaming at every single aspect of it and it's all interconnected. And that's something that I really like because you get to know everybody that you're working with and they become your best friends. And I think I'm really excited just to continue those connections with hopefully it in maybe a year or two, depending on if I graduate or not. I don't know if I want to yet. Um, 
but overall, I just really love people and being around people that have the same passions as me, but kind of turning away from that, I'm really excited to travel as well. I love being in Minnesota and I would probably want to end up here, but I am very, very open and taking a job wherever it takes me and kind of experiencing life outside of the Midwest because I've been stationed here my whole life. <laughs> All of our hockey tournaments are here and we'd have a few out East and that was just like the highlight of playing hockey throughout the summers is because you got to go and see new places. I never got to go on spring breaks or anything to cool places because I was always up in Canada for hockey tournaments. So I really am excited to hopefully kind of branch out in that realm and meet new people and kind of see different parts of the country that I maybe haven't seen before and hopefully end up with an NHL team. I've been following hockey in the NHL for a long, long time now. Um, and I'm willing to take the steps to get there. And I'm encouraged by the path that that requires. Um, but hopefully that's kind of like my, my end goal. And I'm excited by the thought of being able to finally be in that spot. Can you imagine, like, I'm just foreshadowing only because I maybe know this about Jane that Jane also would really love to end up with an NHL team. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like, you know, picturing this a couple of years, maybe sooner. I don't know that the both of you happen to be working for the same team. Like, how amazing would that be? So I'm putting that in my brain because I'm going to help you make <laughs> that happen. That would be incredible. And that's what <laughs> sports is a small world. So you never know. you never know. Um, so we've kind of talked about this and maybe we talked about it offline, but you know, there's, there's, we've come so far in sports for women, right? What, no matter if it's coaching, playing, you know, administrating, broadcasting, whatever, like the, just the realm of women in sport has grown tremendously since I got started and you're so new into it. I wonder about like, you know, what do you think you need to do to lay the foundation for the, the girls and women who are going to come after you? Or what do you think, do you wish maybe someone would have been able to do for you, if that makes sense? Like, how are we going to help the next generation continue to have these opportunities and, you know, be able to follow in our footsteps? Rachel, I'll start with you. I think the biggest thing that we can do um, for people that are coming after us is being persistent in the path that takes us to our goals despite all the adversity that we maybe face. I mean, talking with Katie, I know she has had to deal with a lot of that too and seeing her get to that ultimate goal of being in with an NHL team and her ended up ending up being one of the best broadcasters in the nation for that. I, she got a lot of great feedback working with them and I know that was really validating for her because she grew up with six brothers that all played hockey. So she knew the sport really well, but she also fought with the adversity of, men thinking that she wasn't worthy of talking about sports because she was a girl. Um, so she did that for me and I look up to her. So I think for me, maybe doing that for someone else is doing exactly what she did is fighting through that adversity and being persistent in what you want and sticking to your goals and just making it there and proving everybody wrong that you deserve to be here in this industry. I think that's the most motivating thing that has been for me and hopefully for people to come to. Jane. respecting what happened in the past, but also wanting to build upon that in the future. So like the network of women, regardless of which sport or which um, department or avenue of sports that they've taken, so many people have laid the foundation kind of busting those doors down. Um, but now we just need to like keep the door open, keep that going, move them through, keep everything wide. Um, and being able to communicate that, like the world has become so global there should be so many opportunities regardless of like if you've met or not. And I think that that's something that we can continue to improve upon because yes, I have my network of people I worked with and my peers who are out trying to work in the NFL or the NBA or in other the people that I've met through my jobs who are older than me and who have been um, guiding forces but I've also had some really incredible informational phone calls with women who I've never met and seeing them succeed in whichever branch of sport they've been doing it for, you know, five, 10, 20 years. That's been super motivating and inspirational. And I'd really like for that to continue. And I'm happy to do that for people in the future who are going to come after me because we all have different experiences. We've all had really, we've all had 
great triumphs that it's easy to share like here's what I learned and here's what I can recommend and not that that necessarily has to follow with like oh and I'll do you a favor or I'll slide you in here but like those conversations are all types of industries like those kind of conversations lead to opportunities so often that just making that available to more young women I think would be a good idea I agree so I want to well uh, two things number one I am going to make you all both of you answer the like getting to know you questions that I make all the student athletes answer because it's usually fun and I learn a lot but I also just want to um, sort of close it with this, like uh, this one sort of lasting thought from you as you, as you get into this business and as you, you know, try to kind of move forward is, um, where you think you're going to be. I, I've like, I've told this, to, I've said this to Jane. So Rachel, you'll have to forgive me, but I really, you know, you hear the, you hear the saying all the time. If you see it, you can be it. I also believe if you say it, it will happen. And so I, I really encourage Jane often to say it and believe it and, it might not happen tomorrow, but I feel like you have to help your mindset get to where you want to be. So I want you to tell me where you're going to be. Don't not broadly, like specifically as much as you can, where you're going to be in 10 years, what you're doing and, and with what organization. Oh my goodness. Am wow. I yeah, I, sure. Sure. This oh. is more like a, more like a chance for you to tell me what your, you know, what your hope to, what your hopes are. But I think if you sometimes, if you verbalize it, it just helps to make it feel a little bit more real. Well, initially I wanted to be an ice side reporter for the Minnesota wild. Like I said, I wanted to travel and kind of have my time to kind of be on my own and see new things and everything, but all in all, I want to resort back in Minnesota and wanting to work with a pro NHL team. So that was initially my goal. But I think now that I'm watching um, post game shows as well for NHL tonight and NHL overtime and kind of seeing how they analyze the game afterward, which is something I never really noticed as much because that wasn't necessarily like my dream at first. Um, but I like how that's laid out a lot. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now here at school is kind of analyzing throughout the game and as well post game. So I would like to be an in studio analyst either for the Minnesota Wild or in general for NHL tonight or NHL overtime. Got it. How about you, Jane? 10 years, what's happening? Um, all right, so about three years ago, I started out thinking that in 10 years, I would want to working for the Blackhawks um, and like, if possible, really focusing on like long form communication and writing about the team's connection to the city. Like I mentioned, I think that the community aspect of sports is one of the best. to do um with a franchise is still kind of on the back burner would really love to do that but yeah I think I'd really like to be involved in growing a brand so in 10 years I'd like to have been successfully able to you know promote women's sports or maybe not as storied as my beloved Blackhawks um, <laughs> into the greater limelight uh, I don't really know where that's going to take me and I'm kind of okay with that I think there's so much of the country to see and I'm willing to be a little vague to keep those opportunities open. <laughs> I've lived in a lot of different places, you know, I've lived abroad, I've lived across the Midwest, I've visited Florida for a bit. Um, there's so much that so many different places have to offer. Like, if I get sent to Italy to work with some hockey, sign me up, sign, <laughs> you know, send me back. All sounds good. Um, but also, like, at the same time, I would also really like to be a mom in 10 years and have a family and be able to not balance, but somehow make both of those things work because I don't stop being me and having career aspirations and dreams when I become a mom. Fingers crossed one day. <laughs> I use the, I say often we just blend it, throw it all in the blender and see what comes out. And some days it's... Yep. Some days I'm a really, really good mom and maybe not as great as a commissioner and other days it's the reverse. So there you go. Um, well, listen, before we get to the like fun, you don't have to think real hard answers. I just want to commend you both for, for being brave, for, for chasing your dreams, for owning your vulnerabilities, because that is all, um, those are all things that make you incredible role models for the next generation of girls and women who want to follow in your footsteps. So here's how this part works. It's like 10 questions, 
first thing that pops to your head. Don't overthink it. I'm going to, I'm going to ask it and then we're going to go Rachel Jane. So we'll just okay. go in that order every time so that you don't speak over each other. And this will be fun. I, this, I'm going to try not to laugh because usually I get into it and I'm like, what? <laughs> so let's see. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. I guess. All right. Here we go. Favorite food. Sushi. Sushi. Really? What <laughs> I'm not on that train yet. I'll try to get there. Okay. Favorite movie. Goodwill hunting. 10 things I hate about you. Both of you went like older movies. All <laughs> right. All right. Favorite holiday. Christmas. Thanksgiving. Both for family tradition type reasons. Yes. Jane, you too? Yeah, basically. My family always hosted Thanksgiving. So there's something about being in your own home for the holiday. Got for it. Sure. Got it. How about biggest fear? Heights and the ocean. <laughs> Says the girl who wants to travel everywhere. <laughs> I, know, I know. I can drive. I can drive anywhere. <laughs> okay. Heights and ocean. Jane, what about you? Um, probably also heights. And then um, just like the fear of being completely unknown and not doing anything remarkable with my life. Don't let that feel creepy. Wow, deep. <laughs> <laughs> That's real deep. Sorry about it. <laughs> How about dream vacation? Going to Greece. You know you have to fly there. Yes, I know. Okay. You I can sleep on the plane. Though. Okay. Jane, right. how about you? <laughs> Probably back to Europe somewhere. Greece is on the list. I really want to visit like um, some of the Scandinavian countries as well. Those are all on the list of where I want to go next. Guilty pleasure TV show. Vampire Diaries. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go Jane. I love Vampire Diaries. Oh, Grey's Anatomy for sure, one hundred. That's a close. I'm that's so a addicted. follow up. That one's that's been addicted. said a couple of times already. Actually, you'd be amazed how many of the student athletes say they don't really watch TV. I'm like, come on, you have to binge something. Okay. Um, this one might be harder because you don't have game days. So maybe it's just a, some sort of, you know, musical taste. But what about your, or maybe Rachel, for you, when you were playing, game day pump up jam. Okay, you're going to really judge me. <laughs> but on game days, I listen to piano classical music. Yes. <laughs> really? All yeah. Like, how, did you for a long time? Yep. I, especially, I think I started a couple years in high school. And then all, all throughout college, um, I would do it on my own. Sometimes I'd listen to it in headphones before games, sometimes not, but I really liked it because when I was calm, that's when I played my best. If I was too frazzled or thinking too hard, that uh, just wasn't a good recipe for me. I need to not really be focused, but <laughs> as sad as that sounds, like I need to kind of be in la la land, a bit. <laughs> like singing on the bench, kind of dancing between face-offs and kind of looking up in the stands, I think the less that I took hockey seriously, the more fun that I had and the better I played. So yeah. piano music kind of was just like a be yourself, calm down, everything will be fine type vibe for me. <laughs> I like this. Okay. Jane? Um, I switch it up depending on what I'm doing, but like if I'm working or like my favorite things probably to write, whether it's like stories or whether it's personal stuff. So when I really need to focus, yeah, it's all instrumental. Like not necessarily piano, but I do listen to a lot of piano as well. Um, but like anything like with strings and like a good backbeat, but like not like a hip hop club, but just like anything oh, through. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, like if I'm, if I'm like designing and like I can have words and like the words are not all getting jumbled up there. Um, yeah, like top 40s, embarrassingly enough. And then also like Broadway musical songs, like something that tells a full story that I could listen to for like two hours that'll get me through a car ride designing a graphic doing pretty much anything so I am learning a lot this is fantastic <laughs> uh, okay I'm skipping one because it's not super relevant so let's go to this one because these will be interesting answers best hockey memory winning the high school state championship my sophomore year I feel like if you're, well, I, I might be overstating it, but anyone that I know who's from Minnesota, who's been part of a state championship team, that is like, doesn't matter if they were an eighth grader or a senior, like, because of how important that championship is to the state I have of one Minnesota. more. Can I say one more? Yeah, of course. My freshman year of college here, we played at the Cole Center against Wisconsin. 
Um, I think it was a charity game. They raised money for something. So they sold tickets for a dollar or two. There was like 16,000 fans there. And that was the biggest crowd I ever played in front of. Even though they were 90% Badgers fans, it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> because it was just really fun to finally like play in front of a big crowd like the men do all the time. So it was a cool experience that way. Very cool. How about you, Jane? Ooh, so there's a couple, but probably like work related. Um, my senior year of college, Notre Dame played at the United Center. So it was like a combination of like where the Blackhawks play and like where my college team played. And so I got to like work that and be kind of the lead student um, working that. And it also coincided with the exact day of my 22nd birthday. So that was pretty fun. Like my family came in, my best friend lived in the city at the time. So like met up with them, had a good time, worked some hockey, got to be in the United Center and like have a tour of arguably one of my favorite places. So yeah, that was pretty sweet. Um, other than that though, I'd say that like my favorite hockey memory is probably what got me into loving the sport in the first place. My dad was born and raised in Chicago and he was a diehard Blackhawks fan, had season tickets when he lived there, all of that. And like when the Blackhawks were able to start like broadcasting their games again to like the wider non just Chicagoland area, um, my dad immediately was like, well, we have to watch. And so like just spending hours sitting in front of the TV with him, like kind of explaining a lot of the nuances. I do, but that's kind of like why my joy and love of the sport is so extreme because like, it's so cool to me, everything that everyone does. I'm like, I can't do that at all. So this is amazing. <laughs> Got it. Okay, last one. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. What's one thing that nobody knows about you? Or few people, maybe. Hmm. That's, a, that's not a rapid fire question. That's the one. You gotta You're saying about. I should have prepared you beforehand? <laughs> oh. Jane, do you have one? We'll let Rachel think. Oof. Um, I mean, I guess only a couple people know this. I was like a karaoke regular when I lived in. And so, and so I guess only the people who like were also regulars with me knew that. So like, are you a good singer or you just, there's a difference I think sometimes between a karaoke singer and a singer. Yeah. You didn't hear me say that I was like, <laughs> but I say that I am average to like can carry a tune but I have a very low range so I sing a lot of like songs that were originally sang by men okay that was pretty good I don't I wouldn't have known that if you well I knew that because you told me last year but like I wouldn't have known that if I didn't <laughs> Rachel you got one I want you to go me yeah called out Wow. Tables have turned. Tables you're have turned. turned. That's what you do when you're in sports broadcasting. You <laughs> push it off. What is one thing that nobody, um, well, I think actually probably a lot of people know this now if, I, if I'm around them, but I um, am one of the few people I feel like that doesn't like dogs. I'm generally relatively scared of most of them. And um, I really don't like the ones I'm not scared of. So <laughs> My kids are at an age where they want, uh, you know, a puppy or whatever. And thank goodness I married someone who doesn't have nearly as strong of feelings as I do, but is not encouraging having uh, a dog in our house. So there you go. Okay. Mine is, I obviously touched on how big of a tomboy I was when I was growing up. I wanted to be bald so badly. <laughs> My mom said no, because I would eventually probably get bullied in middle school, but it's a thought that crosses my head all the time because probably through this whole call, I've touched my hair like eight times. I just don't like having my hair down. <laughs> That's a big thing in broadcasting too. My boss doesn't let me wear my hair up. And I'm like, cut it off. <laughs> I don't like it at all. So I've always thought about like, me, I should just shave it all off. But now I don't think that's a possibility unless I really want to pave a way for women in sports. Yeah, I was just about to say, you never know. Bold is bold is good. So I, yeah. that is a good one. I would not have, I don't think very many people would have known that. But now we'll know if it happens, the why. So there it is. <laughs> there it is. 
Oh man, you too. This was so fun. Thank you for joining me and for just, I think reminding me why I love being in this business because there's awesome people that are going to continue to, to make sport what it is for women. And two of them are right here. So I appreciate you so much. And I'm most thankful that I still get to work with you on the day to day. So we'll keep it going and uh, maybe we'll circle back in 10 years and see how close we were to the, to the uh, plans. <laughs> Family reunion. <laughs> Family reunion. There it is. Thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Yeah, thank you for having us.